everyone. Welcome to a video tutorial about how I individualize learning using small groups on Edmodo. My name is Jennifer Beard and I have earned a master's degree in education. I've been working as a teacher for many many years mostly teaching seventh grade social studies. I am also an Edmodo support ambassador I'm a member of the Vanguard technology team for my district, which means that I support and coach educators in my district and also at my local school towards transformational uses of technology. I am currently a seventh grade social studies teacher in the state of Georgia in the United States. I teach at a school called River Trail Middle School, which is in a suburb north of Atlanta in the state of Georgia. Here's my school down here in the bottom right hand corner. So you can kind of get a feel for, for where I go to work every single day. Today I'm going to show you how I have used Edmodo small groups to individualize learning in my classroom. In middle schools in Georgia, our current high stakes testing is the Criterion Referenced Competency Test, also known as the CRCT. So as I was thinking about how to review for the CRCT test in my classroom, it became really apparent to me pretty quickly that my students all had specific and individualized needs. So I decided to individualize the CRCT review for my students. The reason this use of Edmodo would qualify as individualized learning is because as the teacher using small groups in Edmodo has allowed me to provide instruction to an individual learner. It's allowed me to accommodate learning needs for the individual learner. It has allowed me to customize instruction based on the learning needs of the individual learners in my classroom. I also get to modify instruction based on the needs of each and every student in my classroom. It allows me to identify the same learning objectives for all of my students, but it also allows me to identify specific objectives for individuals who need one-on-one -on -one support. I have also selected specific technology uh, and other resources to support the learning needs of each individual learner in my classroom. And skipping down kind of to the bottom, I have used data and assessments to measure progress of each individual learner as they progress through the CRCT review, which I'll show you in a moment in the small groups on Edmodo. At the very bottom, um, this is kind of where I don't really fit into the individualized learning category because rather than assessment of learning in my classroom, I'm actually assessing for learning, which comprises two phases. The first phase is the initial or the diagnostic ass assessment. And then I utilize ongoing formative assessments to assess for learning in my classroom. So how would an educator do this? What key features of Edmodo do you need to know how to use? The first thing you need to know how to do is how to create a small group. Then you need to know how to add students to your small groups. And you need to know how to set students to read only status in your small groups. You also need to know how to create quizzes. You will also need to know how to delete a quiz that a student has submitted that they want to try to take again. You'll need to know how to create and post on the wall posts, assignments, and quizzes. You will need to know how to design backwards and you will also need to be able to assess where each of your students are compared to where they need to be standard wise. And you would actually need to break that down by strand. For example, in Georgia, in seventh grade social studies, our main strands are geography, which is a pretty large topic that actually includes map skills, environmental issues, ethnic groups and religious groups. So all this culture information is kind of embedded in the geography strand. Our other strands are history, government and economics. So you would have to have diagnostic data disaggregated for each student on each of your main strands for whatever your grade level and curriculum is. So how would you do this? If, if there's anything in that list that you don't know how to do, don't worry. You can go to support.edmodo.com and you can scroll down to the Edmodo teacher manual after clicking on I'm a teacher and you can find screenshot directions for anything that I listed that you don't know how to do or that you need to know how to do. You could also, if you can't find the answer, email the support team 
support at edmodo.com. The support team with Edmodo is, is wonderful, very responsive. Okay, so let me start talking to you about how I gathered the diagnostic data. My department uses a, another program called Kia because I teach, you know, over a hundred students being a middle school teacher. I teach five classes a day and I needed to identify where each student was based on each of the four strands. Um, and so I gave them a test in Kia and it allows us to disaggregate by strand because we can attach labels to every single question. So what you see in this picture, this is the government strand for one of my classes and I've covered up my student names here, but you can see the percentage correct that each student got in this one particular strand. So I looked at all five of my classes and how each individual student did in each of the four different strands and I wrote it down kind of on a little matrix like this. So I once again covered up my my students names for confidentiality. So here's my economic strand, my geography strand, my government strand, and my history strand. And each line across represents each individual student all the way down. I would actually have individual student conferences where I would call the students up to my desk. We would look at their individual scores, find their strengths and weaknesses, and we would kind of develop a plan for them to go through the CRCT review based on specifically what they needed individual assistance with. So I created five different small groups in Edmodo. I created the cartographer's workshop in case the students needed to review maps or environmental issues. I created shaman's insight in case the students needed to review ethnic groups and religious groups. I created the library where students could review history and I created capital city where they could review government. And lastly, I created the economist layer where they could review economics. Geography is such a big strand of ours that I actually broke that into two separate small groups because some students need more help uh, needed more help with the ethnic and religious groups whereas other students needed more help with map skills and environmental issues so I wanted to be able to offer both of those options to my students all right so let's see Edmodo in action all right, so this is one of my uh, main groups on Edmodo, my travelers group. And over here you can see the different small groups that I created for my students to be able to go through and individualize their CRCT review. So I'll just click on Capital City, which will take us into the government review. Now it's very important that when you add members into your group, which you would do here under the members button, that you set them all to read only status because everything that I posted in here I posted in a specific order so I wanted my students to work their way down the wall completing every post in order and then when they get to the bottom and they turn in their reflection then I would add them to their next uh, weakest strand that they needed to review for the CRCT so I added students to the small groups based on what they needed to review so if a student really needed some support in ethnic groups and religious groups I would have added them to the shamans insight group first um, whereas if if they needed more support with government I would have added them into capital city first so at the top of capital city wall I have just a post that welcomes them to capital city and shows them that they to uh, click on show full post and show all attachments and do everything in order um, to complete the government review for the CRCT and they needed to complete everything in one post before they could move on to the next post so after the welcome message I posted kind of uh, an overview sheet that they could read and highlight and ask questions about and kind of get a general overview of the topic before they moved on then as they go down the wall everything is very chunked so this is the first section of Georgia performance standards distribution of power which is unitary confederation and federal distributions of power for government so they would review this information and immediately be assessed for their learning so after they reviewed this via however they went about doing that maybe they looked at the PDF and took notes maybe they watched the video review and this this could be differentiated for them based on their learning style preference 
After they completed that, they would immediately take a quiz. And in order to move on to the next section, they would have to get a 90 or higher on this quiz in order to move on to the next piece of information that they needed to review. So if they did not earn a 90% or higher, they would have to come to me and say, Miss Beard, can you please reset my quiz so that I can try again? If the same individual was coming to me two or three or four times in a row asking me to reset their quiz, that's a great opportunity for me to say, hey, little Billy, why don't you come over here? Why don't you and I go over this information one-on-one -on -one together? So it gave me a great opportunity to say, wow, red flag, Billy needs real help with distribution of power um, so that I could have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with that student and really help them learn the information so that he or she could retake the quiz again and become successful um, and really learn that information. So it was a great, great chance for me to really see what piece of that strand is this individual student struggling with. And then after we had the one-on-one -on -one conversation, if they needed additional support resources, I could could just direct message them that particular piece on Edmodo. So this was a great way for me to differentiate and individualize their learning. Then they would get to move on to the next piece where they then had another quiz. So like I said, everything is very chunked all the way through. Um, they also had some assignments to complete. So let me skip down a little bit. Um, so they had all these quizzes. Um, then they had um, a reflection that they had to complete at the very, very bottom where they posted what they learned throughout this particular review. So they had to give me two stars and a wish. So two things that they felt helpful were their two stars. And their wish was a concept that they now understood that they wish they had understood the first time around that we learned it and how that new understanding is helpful to them. Um, let me go back up because I know I had uh, an assignment here that I wanted to show you. Um, oh, okay. So here's the assignment. I had a kinesthetic activity where they practiced some government hand signs, but then they had two songs that they could pick from, and they just had to pick one of the two songs and write down all the lyrics, and they had to turn in the song lyrics. And that got them listening to the song over and over and writing down the lyrics. So it was kind of an auditory, it was a visual, it was a kinesthetic activity. And a lot of the kids really liked this activity. When they turned it into me, they said it really helped them to, to understand and remember some of the government stuff that they find really difficult. So once they finished this small group, um, I could add them to their next weakest area and it was the same kind of thing. So this is cartographers workshop with maps and environmental issues. So I had some outline maps that they could uh, print out and practice labeling. Then they had a video to practice one of the areas, one of the regions, and immediately a quiz um, on political maps and physical maps. So I could tell if they were fine with political, with countries, but they were struggling with the physical features, the rivers, the deserts, the mountains, that kind of thing. It allowed me to really help personalize and individualize their learning. I could sit down with them and send them individualized resources. This was great because as the students work through the small groups themselves, they were busy working on what they needed to and I could actually walk around the room and help individual students as they needed it as they came to kind of a roadblock and needed some additional help and support. So I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions.